Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Olana Judah, how powerful you are and how powerfully you <laughs> fought the battle for us on the cross and gave us the victory. Oh Lord Jesus, you are in our midst. And just as you taught your disciples, in the same way we ask you to teach us the truths that govern our life, the truths that are able to set us free. Lord, just as you interpreted the scriptures, opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures, in the same way we ask you, Jesus, open our minds, our hearts, that we too will understand the scriptures, have a practical working knowledge of the scriptures that will help us to turn our trials into victory. From victim, we will turn into victorious. We thank you and we praise you, believing in faith, O oh Lord, that this truth will not only set our life free, but we will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, please be seated. Let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And verse number 2. Praise God. Are we ready? My brothers and sisters... Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations or trials in your life. Verse number three. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, and let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given to him. Then... And let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Praise the Lord. So, verse number 2 says, verse number 2 says, count it all joy when we fall into various temptations or various trials. The Bible does not say if you will fall into trials, but it says that when you fall into trials, in other words, there is not a single person over here who is not going to face trials in life. Trials are going to come, opposition is going to come, uh, circumstances which are not in your favor are surely going to come. You cannot avoid them. They are surely going to come. But the good news is, God wants to teach His children how you can turn your trials into victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The good news is, God is going to teach us His formula by which we can change our trials into victory. Praise God. Just put the slide, please. So, in the Bible, we have been looking into different heroes in the Bible. And let me tell you, the people which who are recorded in the Bible... You do not find them perfect people. They are people with weaknesses. They are people who have made errors, who have made wrong decisions. And they have faced trials in their life. And the trials were tremendously uh, great. 
it looked like it was a defeat but praise be to god these men and women of god by the help of god turned their defeat into victory their trials into tri triumph praise god praise god now every trial is either going to make me a victim or a victor the choice is mine praise god hallelujah hallelujah if i look at a trial from the negative point of view and allow the trial to have a hold on my life i will end up being a victim but if i use the formula from the bible that very trial is going to turn into victory praise god hallelujah so the epistle of james tells us that we can have the same experience today what the heroes uh, in the bible experienced in their life that same kind of anointing and much more than that anointing god has given to us and we too can experience that victory in our life hallelujah now these trials which are going to come in our life are going to be of two kinds the trials that come from outside and the trials that are on the inside the trials which are on the outside are problems that are coming from the outside but there are many trials that come in our thinking in our temptations praise god that's why when that lady that sister explained to us that she was delivered from 18 years of depression what was she trying to say there was a situation on the outside but much more than that her mind was captivated with those negative thoughts and she was in depression totally under control of the enemy and she could not think the right way she was behaving on the wrong side hallelujah hallelujah but the good news is in every trial who will give us the victory come on in every trial that we are going through who is the one who will give us the victory aha uh -huh. today in the morning we learned who gives us the victory our faith gives us the victory and who gave us that faith jesus gave us that faith how did we get this faith by jesus sacrifice on the cross praise god hallelujah so for us to get victory jesus gives us his faith and his faith when we use it in our everyday life we will experience victory in our life hallelujah thank you jesus now i'll put the next slide from the scripture that we read there were four important words that we read from scripture number 2 to scripture number 8 and the four important words are first one count first one is count in verse number 2 counted all joy when you face or when you fall into diverse temptations or trials in your life the first one is count or consider right there count or consider second one is knowing we know that the testing of our faith produces produces patience no the third one is let patience have its perfect work in you so that you will be matured entire and perfect so the third one is knowing a third one is letting and the fourth one is let him ask of god for wisdom who gives that person wisdom praise god now we are going to study these four words first one is count no let and ask did you finish writing first one is count second one is no third one is let and the fourth word is ask thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus now let's study the first word count put the next slide count it all joy when you fall into various trials count it all joy when you face or fall into various trials now what is the meaning of the word joy he is saying count it all joy or consider it all joy or or think it all joy what is joy what 
to joy. Joy. Contentment. Joy. Happiness. Joy. Okay, I will give you a hint. Okay. Jesus embraced the cross with joy. How can a man who is going to be put to death embrace the cross with joy? How can a person who is going to be stripped, who is going to be crucified, embrace the cross with joy? How can a person who is going to be tortured, insulted, abused, kicked, spat on, rejected by his own, endure, embrace joy? So what is joy? He's saying, count it all joy. Have an attitude of joy when you face trials of any kind. What a joy. We sing this song. Yeah, yeah. We, we have this word which says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So what is joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. What is joy? Mm hmm mm hmm Hmm? Okay, I will explain to you what is joy. Has anybody ever saw a live cricket match? Okay. Now let's say your team is playing Goa and Mumbai. Hmm? So which team do you want to win? Goa. Last ball to be bowled, four runs to win. Goa batsman on the strike. Praise God. Now, as the person, the bowler is coming with the ball to bowl, will you be under pressure? No pressure? Yes, you will be under pressure. Now, when the ball is bowled and the batsman swings the bat and he connects the ball and the ball has gone high up in the air and the, and the fielder is running for the catch, and he takes the catch, but he has crossed the boundary line. Who won the match? Goa won the match. Now, the moment you saw that, will you be screaming loudly? Yes. You'll be screaming loudly because you saw that Goa won the match. Now, the same match is being replayed at night and might be your family member, might be your spouse, your brother, your sister, who is also watching that match, but that person had not seen the live match. He is watching only the replay match. So he highlight, he doesn't know the result. But do you know the result? Yes. Now, when both of them are watching, who will be under pressure, you or that person? Why not you? Huh? Sorry? You know the result. How did you know the result? You had watched the live match. Right? So now you know the result. Now knowing the result, is there any pressure? What about the friend or your family member? Is that person under pressure? Yes. In the same way, just as the cricket match was won, by Goa team, in the same way, the, the match was won for you and me on the cross by Jesus. And what he had won has been written in the Bible. And when you read it, you now know what Jesus has done for you. Now you are no longer looking through your natural eyes. You are looking from this eye. And now you are considering it nothing what is happening around you. But you are saying it's all going to turn into victory because the word of God declares it and that knowing the end result declared in the word of God 
gives you joy. So can a person have joy even in the midst of extreme torture? You know, the, the Bible says in Philippians 4, 4, uh, St. Paul is saying, Rejoice in your spouse always. Just put that. Baba, just put that. Philippians 4, 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord, not in your spouse, not in your children, not in your job, not in your finances, not in any of those things. But rejoice in the Lord always, and I say rejoice. Is he saying that? Can you see this? Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And again I say when is Saint Paul saying these words? Saint Paul is saying these words when he is in the prison. Saint Paul is saying in this, these words when he is being tortured in the prison. Saint Paul is saying these words when he has been dipped in human sewage. So the circumstances on the outside has no effect on Saint Paul because his mind is fixed on God. His mind is fixed on Jesus. He has been told that we are going to kill you and he's rejoicing. Why is he rejoicing when they say, I'm going to, we are going to kill you? He's rejoicing because he's saying, come on, go ahead and kill me quickly because if you kill me quickly, I will be with my master quickly. Then he says, come on, if you don't kill me, I'm still rejoicing because I will be interceding, I will be preaching, I will be getting more souls in the kingdom of God. So whether I live or die, I shall rejoice at every moment because my mind is fixed on God. So who, who experiences joy? Who experiences joy? Joy is experienced by those people who do not look at the trials as a, a tool of defeat, but who looks at the trial with the understanding of God that this trial is going to turn into victory. This trial is going to make me strong. This trial is going to build my character. This trial is going to build my stamina. This trial is going to develop my relationship with God more than before. So this person is using the very trial to renew his mind and become a better person. Hallelujah. Put the slide please again. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now did the epistle of James say if you will fall or when you will fall, what is he saying? He's saying, if you are a Christian, then you must expect that there shall be trials. 100% guarantee. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So is there going to be troubles in our life? Yes. Now we heard this brother Edwin who said these words. He said, when troubles come into our life, we are well equipped with the word of God. So we use the word of God even before the trial can strike us because we know that the word of God is always victorious and victory is mine. So what is his attitude? Joyful or depressed? When a person is joyful, that person has got faith. That person is focused on God. But if the person is depressed, that means that person has got unbelief, that trial will kill you. Do you remember when we were small, did mom give us matchbox and the gas to light? Why not? Because at that time, if she would have given the matchbox and the gas to light, there would be firecrackers at home. 
it would be dangerous. But that same mom, when you began to grow, did she say, come on, can you just go and make some coffee for me? Why? Why is she giving you the fire now? Because she knows that you are grown and this fire is useful. You can use it in the right way. In the same way God is saying to you, these trials that are coming into your life is for your own development, for your own maturity, for your own future. Praise God. But when we taste, see any trial, do we use trial in a positive way or do we quickly jump to a conclusion, this trial is going to kill me? How do we look at trials? I know a person when we were in college, there was this friend of mine. We were all friends sitting in a restaurant in the college canteen and this person had failed in accounts and in maths. He had never crossed more than five marks. He had appeared three times. And we were all having coffee. And one of the boys said, try and try and try again till you succeed. The other one said to him, don't worry, brother. Don't worry, my friend. You and your son can graduate together. So there was lots of fun happening and he, we were all laughing. And this boy got up and left the canteen. We never saw him again. We never saw this boy again we began to realize that what words we had spoken had made him extremely angry we never saw him after years later on might be about 12 15 years later on i met him in bombay on the way i saw him and i was so happy after so many years that i saw him i put my arms around him and i wished him and the first thing he said get your hands off me he remembered what had happened in the canteen. He said, get your hands off me. And then he said, I'm talking to you. Do you know who I am? I said, no. I'm meeting you after so many years. Tell me. He said, I'm a professor of maths and accounts. And then he smiled and he said, I thank God that day you all insulted me. And when you insulted me, I was so angry that I said, I will master these two subjects. And I began to practice and practice and practice and practice. And do you know that answer paper? I've got it even today. When a person comes to my class, I run my own coach, uh, tutorials for maths and accounts. And those answer paper is there on the notice board to show my students I had failed in this subject. I could not get more than five marks. And here I am to show you that I am a professor of maths and accounts. What did he do to his trial? He used his trial to develop himself, to master it. Not that trial to kill him, but he used that trial to make him victorious. Was it easy? No, it was not easy. Did it take time? Yes. Did it take labor? Yes. Did it take practice? Yes. Did it take pain? Yes. Did it, was it uncomfortable? Yes. Everything is true. But the end result was victory. In the same way, God is saying to us, trials are surely going to come. You cannot avoid them. But are you going to use the very trial to step higher, to become stronger? God never says the trials will not come. Uh -huh. He says they will surely come. But when they are coming, are you taking it on the positive side or are you taking it on the negative side? This boy could have said, this maths and accounts is too difficult for me, so let me leave it. Or did he say, I'm going to practice and get victory over it. I will master it. So are you the person who allows trials to master you or do you master your trials? And that's the attitude he's talking about. Count it all joy is an attitude. 
And remember, it's the attitude that decides the altitude. If your attitude is right, it can take you to a great height. If your attitude is wrong, it can kill you completely. Put the slide, please. Put the John 16, 33. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you that you might have, that you might have, that you may have, that you might have, that you might have. Jesus saying, I have spoken you these words, these things. My words I have spoken to you that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations, you shall have trials, you shall have negative situations and circumstances. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now what is Jesus saying here? He's saying, I too like you came into this world and I lived as a human being, not as God. But I made a decision to get my mind stayed on my father and when the trials came, I would not allow trials to have a hold on me but I overcame those trials by obeying my father. I overcame those trials by believing in the words and in the will of my father. And just as I have overcome the world, I have overcome this world for you. Now, there are many a times when trials are going on in our life, a person will say, I experience no peace. I don't have peace. Brother, please pray. In my family, there is no peace. Have you heard that? Hello, have you heard that? How does a person experience peace? How does a person experience peace? Hello? How does a person experience peace? Huh? You pray for peace and you will have peace. Romans 15 verse 13. Romans 15 verse 13. How does a person experience peace? Please read that. Now, the God of hope, say that God of hope. Everybody say that God of hope. You know why I'm asking you to say it? So that you remember it. The Bible doesn't say he is the God of faith. But what does he say? God of? Which one is greater? Hope or faith? Who said faith? Which one is greater? Faith or hope? Hope. Who said hope? If I say faith, he screams. If I say hope, he screams. What do I do? Which one is greater? Faith or hope? Faith, hope, hope, faith, 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 hope, 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 faith. Hey, faith, hope, 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 hope. Okay, okay, let me put it this way. Has anybody ever seen a idli? Idli? Okay, okay. If the mold in which you make the idli is round, what will be the shape of the idli? Square. Very good. What will it be? Round. Now, the mold in which you put the batter, that mold is your hope. And the promise of God that you take in your everyday life and you believe, 
that matter that you put is that substance called faith that you put in that hole, in that mold then it becomes your faith so if the mold is wrong can you get a round idli hello if there is no mold can you get a idli so hope is fast when you have hope now where did you get this hope you got this hope from the promises of jesus that promises give you faith but that promises first of all give you hope and also supplies the the substance that is needed to turn this hope which is invisible which is spiritual into reality example this was my hope this was my dream to have a place like this it was the mold in my mind now to bring this mold into reality i had the promises of god now how did i get this mold i got this mold from the god of from the god of see the god of this world who is the devil will say hopeless hiv hopeless cancer hopeless financial crisis hopeless he will keep on putting in your mind thoughts of hopelessness now when you read the scripture and you get the promises of god what is the god do, going to do through his promises first of all give you what hope example i got fear to go from here to the gate at night extreme fear so what am i hoping i might see an animal i might see a snake i might see something or the other and i got fear now the god of hope says listen child i am with you i will never leave you never forsake you i am with you i am in you i have put my angels in guard in uh, i put my angels in your life they will protect you now all these scriptures are there now i have got two choices one hope in my fear and never leave this place and be depressed two make a hope based on the scriptures and step out in faith is it right come on is it right come on is it right now that's exactly what he's saying he is a god of hope who fills you with what come on the god of hope fills you with what joy and peace now this joy and this peace comes how come comes out in believing the promise of god that he has given to you in the word are you following are you following okay let me put it this way you are extremely healthy there's no problem with you you just went for a routine test you are extremely in peace now when the blood report came it said blood cancer the doctor's report was an error but it said blood cancer now what happened to your peace it is gone into pieces what happened to your joy it's gone into pieces why is it gone into pieces because you chose to believe what the doctor said is it right is it right now on one side is the doctor's report on the other side is god's report called the word of god if you believe god's word then you will have what worry or joy now this joy and this peace is not based on physical seeing but on spiritual believing 
You know, how is our joy and peace? Our joy and peace is based on physical manifestation. We have been practicing our joy and peace based on physical experience. But here is God saying, no, 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 no. Even if your case is hopeless, I want you to change your thinking. Consider it nothing but joy. Consider that problem that you're going through nothing compared to God and say to yourself, God is on my side. Who can be against me? This change of thinking is what gives you joy and peace. Do you know why we fail trials in our life? We fail trials in our life because we have never developed joy. But we have been champions in growing worry. We are champions in growing anxiety. We are champions in growing what we see, what we hear, which are negative. And here is God saying, no, 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 I am the God of hope. Even if you can see with your eyes, even then you can understand with your mind, your case is hopeless, but I'm here to tell you, my child, I'm a God of hope to the hopeless. Those who do not know my testimony, let me just give you a small thing. Uh, on, on, on Wednesday, we went to the hospital to meet a person who is in the hospital. This man used to be a boxer, a big businessman, and we went to meet him. And I and Eldred went to the ICU to pray for him. And we looked at him. He could not recognize us. A person who wished to come to listen to God's word. And when we came out, I spoke to Alred and I said, did you see that brother could not recognize you and me? He said, yes. I said, that's exactly what was my condition 16 years back. I could not recognize anybody. I did not even know my name. So in a condition like that, if somebody had to see me, it looked like hope. Come on. It looked like what? Hopeless condition. And in that hopeless condition, I was brought to a retreat. I did not come for a retreat. I was brought for a retreat and the word of God was being proclaimed. When the word of God was being proclaimed from my hopelessness, listening to the word of God, God began to give me a new hope. And the more and more I began to believe his word came believing. And when believing came, Along with believing came joy and peace. Now let me ask you, when the joy and peace came, did my situation change? No. Did my trial change? No. Nothing changed on the outside, but the good news is there was a great change on the inside in my thinking. Listen, before anything can change on the outside, there has to be change on the inside. Only when the change takes place inside, now you can say the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world because the power on the inside, when it becomes greater, it has to change and it will surely change all the circumstances that are from the outside putting pressure on you inside. But if your inside is hopeless, then the pressure from the outside will kill you. That's what he's saying. You know, today we explained about believing and unbelief. Did we explain? Hello, don't worry, he comes for all of my retreats. Praise God. You might miss the next month retreat, but they are always there. So don't, don't bother them. And they always want the high position. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, today, today we learnt on believing and unbelief. Right? After listening to believing and unbelief, in the evening and in the afternoon, 
there were so many who kept coming and kept speaking unbelief. Now, why is the word of God preached to you? The word of God is preached to you so that, first of all, you change your what? You change your what? If this thinking has not changed, you are going back home still defeated. Do you know why we come for the retreat? We come for the retreat for only one purpose, to change our thinking. The level to which your thinking has changed and is agreeing to God's word is the level of joy and peace that you experience. If your thinking has not changed, you're going back home the same. What is he saying? May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. That this scripture, this promise, this word that is giving you hope, that hope becomes concrete in you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That you are bound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The more and more and more and more deeper you get into the word, the word of God will give you hope which is impossible. The word of God will give you hope and desire and dreams which is beyond your capacity, beyond your ability. And he's going to say, I am the God of hope and I'm with you and I will do these things in your life. I want you to do only one thing, believe. How do you know you are believing God's word? Ask yourself, do I have joy? Do I have peace? You might be in the worst situation of your life. Extreme worst situation of your life. In that worst situation, ask a question. Do I have joy? Do I have peace? If these two things are absent, then you have got unbelief. And as long as unbelief is there, that unbelief is going to kill you. Tell your neighbor, unbelief will kill you. Tell your neighbor, unbelief will kill you. Believe will save you. Put the, put the scripture, please. So nature of these trials are various. Some trials come simply because we are human. Listen, as long as we are human, what, what will come into us? Sickness, accidents, disappointments, death. No, no, no. Today, today, in the evening, there was this young girl. Did you see her? She was suffering from arthritis. Right? Hello, right? Why do you think I called her out? Because the mother told me in the afternoon, please pray for my daughter. From one year, she has got arthritis. And we have come all the way from Bombay, believing somebody told us to come for this retreat. And we have come here, believing for a miracle. And I said, if you can sit in front and pay attention to what the word of God is saying, then I promise you, before the evening session is over, your daughter will be free of arthritis. Now, why am I so confident about that arthritis going out of her body? Uh -huh. Everybody comes with belief, but they come with human belief. Because I have experienced the same in my life. This leg of mine is broken even today. I'm not supposed to stand more than 45 minutes. And I've used the same scripture. And that same scripture has set me free. So that same scripture that has worked for me helps me to teach others with the experience that this word has worked in my life to teach others it will work in your life as well. So when a sickness comes into your body, 
if you are using a scripture to destroy that sickness then that very scripture that destroyed that sickness in you when you go and teach others that same scripture it will work in their life as well so what has this trial done this trial was meant to make me a handicap but praise be to God using the word of God I've not only been released from there but I'm able to teach others how to come out of it so what is the trial done the trial has actually helped me to develop with the knowledge and the understanding and practical application which I never knew till I used it in my life and it worked for me now I can teach others that it will work for you as well do you understand hallelujah so remember as long as I'm human I'm in this body sickness disease and all this will come to afflict me but even though it comes to afflict me God has given me his tool, God has given me his anointing, God has given me his power by which I am able to overcome that sickness with victory. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give me 1 Peter 4.12 please. 1 Peter 4.12 Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though something strange thing happened unto you. 13. But rejoice, but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now, what is he saying? Put the 13th verse again, please. The twelfth verse, please. Now, I'll give an example. Have you heard about a sickness called chikungunya? Nurse? Chikungunya? Was it, was it afflicted in Goa? I don't know about Goa, but in South? You have heard, Baba? Chicken gunia? Okay. According to medical terms, uh, Maria, how many months does a person suffer medically? What is she saying? One week? Six months to one year and plus. Correct? And it's extreme painful right now I got struck when I remember one evening I was driving on the bike and as I was driving each kilometer going by I could feel a change taking place in my body and I'm a person who can take extreme physical pain but that day I realized that something strange was happening to me on the bike so instead of going to the family doctor I straight away went to the hospital because I knew that something strange was happening to my body. My body was not obeying my mind. So I was on the bike. I parked the bike in the parking lot, went inside the hospital, sat down there and I said, something strange is happening to me. I don't understand. So they asked me to fill the form. I filled up the form and they said, okay, uh, sit on the wheelchair. I said, I will never sit on the chair. They said, no, we have to take you inside. I said, I'm not sitting. I will walk. And when I got up to walk, I can't get up. By now, that sickness has taken over me within 10, 15 minutes. And now I can't move my leg. I can't move my hand. 
I can't move anything. And now they put me on a wheelchair. They take me on, a, on, on the wheelchair to the room. Now I can't even move to the bed. They have to actually pick me up and put me there. Now let me tell you, this was the first time I'm experiencing something in my body. And the first thing is coming is, you got a stroke, everything gone. And all your nut bowls are jammed. Nothing is moving. Now by after one hour, I can't open my mouth. If I open my mouth, it's painful. They took all the tests and they came and told me, you are suffering from chicken gunia. I said, what chicken? I thought because I eat a lot of chicken, there is some sickness that I got because of eating chicken. I did not know. Praise God. Hallelujah. The next day, uh, two of my brothers came to visit me. And you know, when you are in the hospital and somebody who loves you, you get good breakfast. You get coconut water, you get uh, nice uh, sandwiches and all that. And, and you know, all these things were coming and we had not told anybody, but only the close members knew it. So sandwich, this, that, everything is coming. And I can't open my mouth to eat it. So who is eating? Those two brothers. And they are saying, brother, it is extremely tasty. Praise God. Now I find that I can't even go to the toilet. I'm in this, this condition. After three days, my brother Alred comes to know that I'm in the hospital. He knew it. After three days, he comes to the hospital and he looks at me and says, what are you doing here? I said, got jammed. By now the jaws are open a little. I'm in pain. And he says, come on, let's go. So I thought, if I go to Goa, I will have a good time. Alred will be taking care of me. So I said, okay, let's go. But I said, how to get out of this hospital? So he said, leave it to me. So he went to the doctor and told the doctor, I'm taking a discharge, I'm taking him. So the doctor says, his condition is bad, you can't take him out of the hospital. And he said, listen, that man has no money. I'm the one who has come to pay the money. And let me tell you, I'm paying the money for three days. From tomorrow, nobody's going to pay the bill. So you better think, do you want to give a discharge? And if you want, I'll sign. The doctor said, yes, you can take a discharge. He's smart. So he got a discharge and he said, come on, let's go to Goa. And we booked the bus ticket. I got a discharge at 11 o'clock, 2 o'clock was the bus. And we got the seat right where? Last row. Praise God. Last row. City ba jara hai. Tere ko bar bad milna bata da hai. Praise God. Now when the bus is jumping, Alred is asking me, paining? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. No. Hurting? No. Praise God. We reach Goa. Now, after reaching Goa, where should he take me? To the hospital or to his house? Do you know where he takes me? He takes me to the retreat where I'm supposed to preach. And he says, brother, today is the first day of the retreat and people have already come. So go ahead and preach the gospel. And I said, you gone crazy. How can I preach? I can't stand. And he said, the pulpit is extremely strong. All you got to do is lean on it and speak. If you fall, I will lift you up. Then you have to preach again. And praise be to God, I preached for three hours, then he took me home. Next morning he brought me again. Preached for five hours, took me home. The third day I preached the whole day. Chicken gunya was gone for the ever. How did it happen? How did it happen? How did it happen? I got my focus off the disease and got my focus on the word. The word healed me completely. So beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you as though something strange thing is happening to you. 13. 13. But rejoice, but, but, how many of us are rejoicing in our trials? And how many of us are grumbling in our trials? 
How many of us are complaining in our trials? Some of you are complaining because some mosquito is coming and kissing you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. The small things are affecting you. The big things will do what to you? Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you a person who is rejoicing in your trial or are you a person who is complaining in your trial? So he's saying rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. Means what? Just as Christ obeyed his father and to the, do the father's will, he got victory. In the same way, my friend, when you are going to go through the father's will, your human, fallen, miserable, sinful, selfish nature is going to scream and scream and scream and scream and scream because our selfish, sinful nature does not want to obey the Father's will. But when we become partakers of that, what will happen? The very trial that has come against you will now turn into glory because it will give you victory. Hallelujah. If your victory is not here, the victory can never be on the outside. Before we can experience the victory outside, it has to be here. And how do you know the victory is here? Two things. Joy and peace. Ask your neighbor, when was the last time you got annoyed? How many years back? How many years back you got annoyed? Only ask the married people. The, those who are not married, they are already, always in joy. The married people. Anybody married? Nobody's married now. Brother, you are married? When was the last time you... Last month you became angry? Last month, let me take your photo. <laughs> now only she slapped you on your back. Last month? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So unless we get victory over here, turning our Changing our mind into joy and peace, there's going to be no victory. So first thing, have an attitude of joy. Have an attitude of thanksgiving. Even though I do not understand this trial, Lord, but one thing I know, you are a good God and you will work all things together for my good. I don't understand how it's going to happen. But I do understand, Lord, if you are on my side, who can be against me? So Lord, even though I don't understand now, I'm ready to go through this process with joy and thankful attitude. Praise God. Just put the slide. So, 2 Timothy 3.12. 2 Timothy 3.12. Put 2 Timothy 3.12. Please read that. Ye, ye means yes. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall, shall suffer what? In other words, when you do good, there will be uh, devil using somebody to cause trouble to you. Now when this persecution comes, what is my attitude towards the persecution? 
joyful or fighting? Joyful or fighting? Hello, joyful or fighting? Have you ever heard, if I don't open my mouth and talk to that fellow, he will sit on my head? And I can already see so many of them, their hair is gone because that fellow was sitting on his head. I don't want to lose my hair. So let me give a piece of my mind. So you open your mouth and give piece of your mind. When you come back, what has happened to your mind? Pieces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sir, the other sir is laughing at you, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's looking at you and laughing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. He's, he's looking at to you and looking at me. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So persecution will come. Trials will come. Opposition will come. Even when you are doing good. Yes. Why are they coming? Put the slide please. Let's see. Why are they coming? They are coming because Satan fights us and the world opposes us and therefore these trials are coming satan is extremely extremely angry when you are living a godly life why because when a person lives a godly life that person is ex extremely extremely a big threat to the devil hallelujah hallelujah 33 years of my life i was living a life without Jesus. I was a first class top messenger agent of the devil destroying people's life. I don't remember how many people's life I have destroyed. But when I was shifted from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, I began to give my body, my mind, my whole self to Jesus. Now what did, what did, what happened? The first thing the trials in my life trained me to fight the good fight of faith and get the victory. So once I got that victory over my trials, I can now come and teach you how you can get victory in your life also because in God's kingdom there is no partiality. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so what's the first attitude? What's the first attitude? Grumbling, complaining, murmuring, or joy? Come on, joy. Come on, joy. Come on, joy. Will this joy come to you after you get victory or before you get victory? Will you get this joy after the victory or before the victory? Will you get this joy before the victory or after the victory? After? Before? Will you get this victory before the... Uh, will you get this joy before the victory or after the victory? Last time I'm asking you, please understand, will you get this victory, will you get this joy before the victory or after the victory? Before the victory. Because that joy will give you the strength to press forward when the trial comes because that joy will build up your faith. Joy does not come after the victory. Joy comes before the victory. That's why Jesus had joy before the victory. Why did he have joy before the victory? Because he knew if I can go through the cross and just obey my father and walk in obedience, even if I'm crucified, praise God, I will win the battle of obedience. So did Jesus have joy before or after? 
He had joy before, like the woman who is pregnant. Does she have joy before the delivery or after the delivery? The day she comes to know that she's pregnant, how do you, what she says? I'm pregnant. Can she see the baby? Now, nine months, the shape is gone. She was so beautiful. Now she's like a gas cylinder. But is she losing a, a, her joy? No. Now she's walking. Is she losing her joy? Now she can't even sleep like this. She has to sleep this way. Is she losing her joy? No. Her back is paining. Is she losing her joy? She's going through every change in her body, every change in her life. But is she losing her joy? No. Because she knows after nine months, I'm going to get my baby whom I can't see, but I will see after nine months. Mm. If that woman was told, you will get the baby after nine years. Now, would there be joy? Some of them are saying, nine months only is too much, brother. Nine years? Oh my God. Hallelujah. So, joy comes before or after? Come on, joy comes before or after? Joy will continue to be in you as long as you are believing. The believing is gone, joy is gone. Joy and peace are twin brothers. They are always together. So can there be a person who has got joy in the midst of trial? Yes. How does he get this joy? He gets this joy by knowing what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Did you get that? Okay. Put the next slide, please. So how are the Christians supposed to respond? Come on, how are these Christians supposed to respond? With? 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 Hallelujah. So here are the examples. You can write it down. When you go home, you can read it. The apostles also responded with the attitude of joy when they were persecuted. Paul responded the same. The Christians responded the same. Put those scriptures and look into your... and Compare them with your life. You will find... That they were facing death in their life But in spite of the death In spite of the torture They were experiencing extreme joy Why? Because the attitude was based on Jesus Hallelujah 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 So what is a Christian's first response to his trial? Joy if your response is not joy, then that trial will destroy you. That trial will kill you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Finished? Let's close our eyes. The book of James is teaching us that the first step to turn our trials into triumph victory is to immediately thank God and adopt a joyful attitude. The first step is to look into the scriptures, find the relevant scriptures and believe those scriptures by renewing our mind, by making a new hope because the God is the God of hope. And through the Holy Scriptures, through the promises of God, God fills us with two things, joy and peace, through our believing. And that joy and that peace gives us the strength in the midst of a trial. This is the first step that a Christian should develop an attitude of joy. Just like in a cricket match when we see with eyes that the team has won now no matter we, when we see the match again having known the end result we are not under pressure in the same way what God has promised us he will surely do it but on the condition of our believing and now that we know that believing produces faith 
it produces joy it produces peace and this joy and this peace which develops our faith that faith is tested that faith is not tested to destroy us but that faith is tested like gold is purified in fire in the same way we are being purified with our trials so that our life is more and more purified and the light of god shines in our life father thank you for teaching us this first step and most of the time we have failed in the midst of a trial to rejoice to have a thankful attitude to recall the great victories that you have given and remember these testimonies that builds our faith like david said the lord was with me when i fought the lion the lord was with me when i fought the bear that same lord is with me when i fight this goliath lord he used his past testimonies to build up his faith and he was joyful and having peace when all the people of israel including saul who was anointed who was chosen by god was filled with fear lord you are showing us again and again it is our attitude that gives us the victory father all this time unbelief in us helped us to develop grumbling murmuring complaining bitterness offense anger hatred unforgiveness but today you are teaching us oh lord that this joy and peace will take us through the path of fiery trial to lead us into victory today we ask you father to help us develop this new nature this new attitude of being joyful and having a thankful heart for all that you have done and that you continue to do especially in trials that are not in favor of us that we do not lose our faith and get into grumbling but continue in that new hope that comes through your scriptures that we will develop this hope through the power of your holy spirit we thank you and we praise you as you continue to teach us after dinner in jesus mighty name amen